Is there a supernatural dimension? A world beyond the one we know? Is there life after death? Do angels exist? Can our dreams contain messages from heaven? Can we tap into ancient secrets of the supernatural? Are healing miracles real? Sid Roth has spent over 35 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. Why does a rabbi get involved in deliverance people that have evil spirits? Why does a rabbi say it's so simple you can take care of it yourself? Uh, why does a rabbi say everyone needs deliverance in areas of their life? Why does a rabbi say you will have unprecedented peace when you're totally free. Anyone interested? Yeah. Uh, Rabbi Schneider, when was the first time you were exposed to deliverance of demons? It was the mid-1980s, Sid. I was pastoring a church. There was someone that was really manifesting demons. I was called to the scene. I brought another pastor with me. I had never been exposed to it before. Leave it! Leave it! Leave! The only thing I knew how to do was scream. Hopefully they'd leave. And we left that, we left that episode, and the older pastor that I had brought with me said to me, he said, you know, when your blade is sharp, you don't have to cut so hard. You learned the lesson well. But then you have this Messianic Jewish congregation, and you notice a lot of problems. And you decide you're going to help these people with a course. But then that created a problem. Explain. Exactly. Well, I became aware of the fact that as we're moving deeper into the end times, more than ever, people have been infiltrated with demonic spirits. And so I got some training in this area to minister deliverance to people. And we set up a team. I trained a team of people in our congregation to minister deliverance. It's about an eight-hour process that we bring people through. Well, what happened, Sid, was so many people were requesting to go through the process that we ended up in a short period of time being booked out a year in advance. And every week I'd run into people that say, I need help, I need help, I need to go through deliverance. And I'd say, you know what, let's get you through the deliverance process, realizing in my heart they were going to wait a year. And I was so grieved about this, I began to inquire, Lord, what can I do to solve this? I tried to raise up another deliverance team. I couldn't find the right people with the right time availability. Kept on seeking, Lord, how can I help these people? They need help today, not a year from now. And the Lord led me to start teaching on what I call self deliverance so that the people in the congregation that needed help today that we couldn't see for a year that they could find help today through the process of learning how to exercise the Holy Spirit within them with the Word of God to get breakthrough through the darkness so that they could come into freedom for themselves and so that's how this whole concept evolved it was really to address a need that I saw within my congregation now there's people watching us right now and it was this demon business as that's that's not for today. We don't have demons today. What would you say? You know what? That's a great question. And I think that we do live in such a sophisticated time that, as you said, Sid, the term seems archaic. I like to try to uh, uh, speak to people on these terms. Most of us will recognize that there is such a thing as evil in the world. In other words, we can point to specific acts where, for example, a child was abused sadistically, and no one would argue that that's evil. So the next question is, well, where did that evil come from? So that then people are moving from the fact that they see evil in the world. Now they're moving into the phenomenon, okay, I see that there is such a thing as general evil. When we speak about a demon, we're taking it one step further. We're going beyond general evil to personal evil. That evil has intelligence and it has an agenda to destroy. What about a born-again Bible believer that says, 
wait a second, you've gone a little too far. I can't have a demon. What would you say? Well, you know, the scriptures say to us, Paul said, our fight is not against flesh and blood, but against the principalities of darkness. So, of course, he was speaking to believers when he said, our fight is not against flesh and blood. And Peter said, your adversary, speaking to believers, the devil is roaming around like a lion looking for someone to devour. So the New Testament is very clear that everybody is struggling against darkness. When we come back, I want you to share about how God set Rabbi Schneider free supernaturally from a dream. Yes, a dream. We'll be right back. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. If you love watching our It's Supernatural TV program, you can now watch hundreds of archive programs online, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, on your computer, your smartphone, your iPad, or your favorite tablet. ISN will be the vehicle to equip you to being normal, normal as defined by the Bible. Just log on to SidRoth.org forward slash ISN. We now return to It's Supernatural. Uh, Rabbi Schneider, how might demons re, uh, manifest themselves to people? In what ways? And some, I understand, they think it's themselves, and it's really not. Absolutely. That is such a key for us to realize that many of the problems that we're dealing with, things like fear, sadness, anger, addiction. These are not just natural problems. These are supernatural problems. And that's one of the keys to getting deliverance over darkness is to recognize that many of the thoughts that we have that cause defeat and torment in one's life are not originating from within. They're originating from the outside. I like to describe a demon as a personal evil with intelligence that seeks to occupy space either space in our mind so that it's affecting our thought life or even space in our body. And when someone is walking around, let's say, depressed all the time, they have to realize that God's happy. So if God's happy and they're depressed, where's the depression coming from? And although oftentimes there are some natural reasons, what happens is, is that demons connect to personal vulnerabilities, personal weaknesses in our own life, and they make a natural problem, a supernatural problem that requires a supernatural solution and a supernatural activation to break it off. Well, demons just leave on their own if you do nothing about it. Absolutely not. Demons are intruders and they will not leave on their own. Sid, I think about a dream that I had not too long ago. And in this dream, I was living in this really dilapidated house. It was really small, you know, maybe like a 15 by 15 foot room. It was old. It was kind of falling apart. You could feel the atmosphere in there. It was dark and depressing. And I was sad in that space. And then 20 yards away from me, from this dilapidated house I was living in, I could see another house. And this other house was like a 3,000 square foot home. It was brand new, it was contemporary, it was clean, it was attractive, it had a light, happy feeling to it. And in the dream, Sid, I knew that that beautiful house was mine. And yet here I was living in this dilapidated space. Then I realized, why was I living in this dilapidated space when that beautiful home 20 yards away was mine that I could be living in? And of course, houses represent the place that we live. And I realized as I, the dream continued that the reason I was not taking possession of the beautiful house is because there were demons living in the home. I could see the demons in the dream. They were in the form of human beings, but I could see by the energy that these human beings were giving off that were in my house, violent, hateful, intense energy. Because those demons were in the home as squatters, they didn't have a right to be there and they weren't gonna leave on their own. I realized that my fear of going into that house and taking occupancy of it is what was keeping me from living in that space. Eventually, I got so sick and tired of living in that dilapidated, small, depressed place, I made up my mind I was going to take possession of that beautiful home that the Lord gave me. So in the dream set, I went to that beautiful house, again, 20 yards away. I stood outside the door, and I waited for the head demon to come out. This house is mine. No demon can stop me from taking possession of this house. When he came out, I took a hold of him. 
threw him on the ground, and I just started smashing and ramming him with my fist in his face. And at first, it seemed like nothing was happening. I felt totally impotent, powerless, but I was so committed to getting free, so tired of being sick and tired, I just kept punching, and all of a sudden, psh, all the air went out from him, and he was gone, and I was able to take possession of my home. But I had to confront him and make him leave. He wasn't going to leave on his own. There are ways that most are ignorant of that these demons try to occupy our homes. Mm -hmm. What are some of the uh, openings that we have that we may not even be aware of? Yes, in other words, how can they gain entrance? Yeah. And things, for example, like unforgiveness. I learned about this, again, through a prophetic dream. And as a new believer, you know, I read Jesus' words years ago, forgive and you shall be forgiven. And I thought, but Lord, don't you just forgive me? And I really didn't understand how important it was for me to forgive people. And what happened was the Lord taught me this lesson through a dream. I was in another house, completely different dream, but again, took place in a house. Remember, Jesus spoke about the person that was delivered from demons, and the demon left, and he said if that house that he was evicted from wasn't put in order. So sometimes our spiritual space is what the Bible uses to symbolize a house. So in other words, I'm in this house, and I'm being tormented in this house. There was something behind me that was just tormenting me and oppressing me. I couldn't see what it was. I could just feel the oppression. And in the home, I kept on running from room to room to try to escape this tormentor behind me. No matter what room I went into, this tormentor wouldn't leave. Finally, after this went on for some time, I felt the gaze of God come down upon me. I literally felt the gaze on the eye of the Father from heaven come down upon me, sit in the dream. And then the Lord showed me as His gaze was upon me, somebody in my life that I hadn't forgiven. And He said to me, release them. I forgive them. And as soon as I released them, that tormentor was gone. So demons can gain access through unforgiveness. When we stay in unforgiveness, we're legally opening up a place where a demon can gain interest and torment us. The same thing with willful sin. When someone is willfully living outside of God's moral boundaries, he places himself in a position where demons have access to him. A big one is generational spirits, spirits that have been in our families. Well, I like if there's divorce for the last three generations, you don't have to be a mental giant. Exactly. And, you know, even things like depression. You know, if your mom was depressed and your dad was oppressed, chances are you're going to have to deal with that spirit and break it out of your, out of your existence, out of your life. You teach that we should refuse to be intimidated by these spirits. What do you mean? Well, what I, what I mean is that, I mean, we know that Jesus is Lord. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. He, he reigns, and because He reigns, I refuse to allow a demon to have dominion over me. I see this in my own life, and I see this when I exercise demons out of other people. When we know that they have to leave because Jesus is Lord, and we're His, and He's ours, they will leave. You know, it's like I heard you say before, Sid, they won't leave until they know that you know they have to leave. Rabbi Schneider, there are people all over the world right now that are struggling with bad thoughts, with demonic problems, with sickness problems. When we come back, I want you to tell us things that God has taught you so that they can be free. Be right back. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. Call now and get Rabbi Kurt Schneider's Freedom and Self-Deliverance Package, which includes his powerful book, Self-Deliverance, and his anointed five-part audio CD teaching, Freedom and Deliverance. Yours for a donation of $45. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9354. Through the Freedom and Self-Deliverance Package, you will learn how to identify and overcome the enemy's number one weapon against you. Understand the various ways demons try to take up residence in your life. Find out how to close and lock doors of entry the enemy uses so he can never harass you again. Begin to instantly determine thoughts and actions that are inspired by God and those that come from demonic influence. Understand how not to be led astray by other voices, especially in the end times that we are living in. Pronounce specific commands that compel the forces of darkness to leave. Close demonic access that was gained through generational sins, fear, and trauma. Understand how to free yourself and help others get free. Receive your healing from emotional and physical ailments that are tied to demonic strongholds. Experience on an ongoing basis God's love, peace, favor, and His power like never before. Rabbi Schneider will lead you through many powerful prayers throughout his book and the five-part audio CD teaching series that will help you in the process of self-deliverance. I can't wait to get 
get this book and the five CD set, Freedom and Deliverance, into your hands, not just for yourself. There are going to be multitudes coming to you for help. Don't miss out on getting Rabbi Kurt Schneider's Freedom and Self-Deliverance Package, which includes his powerful book, Self-Deliverance, and his anointed five-part audio CD teaching, Freedom and Deliverance. Yours for a donation of $45. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9354. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural, P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9354 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. We now return to It's Supernatural. Uh, Rabbi Schneider, you told me it is very important for us to understand the distinction between authority and power. Explain that. Well, Jesus, all authority, Jesus said, on heaven and earth has been given to me. And we were saying before the break, Sid, that we have to know that we have authority in Jesus. Demons will not respond if we're not standing in a position of knowing the authority that Jesus has and knowing that in Him we can use that authority. But there is a difference between authority and power. I like to explain it this way. A police officer has authority because of the office that he stands in. And of course, if someone gets pulled over by a car, the police officer gets out of the car, he or she is wearing the badge. Oftentimes they'll have a hat and the uniform which represents their authority. And most people that are pulled over will cooperate with the police officer just because the police officer has authority. But sometimes people won't cooperate. And when people won't cooperate with the police officer because of the authority, the police officer then has to back up his or her authority with power, whether it be a phaser, billy club, or whatever that is. And the same is true in dealing with demons. Sometimes demons will just respond to authority. However, some demons will not respond to the authority unless the authority is backed up by power. Authority is given to us automatically when we receive Jesus. But power has to be developed. Remember, for example, they came to Jesus and they said, concerning the one that the demon had not been driven out of, they said, why could your disciples not drive the demon out? And Jesus said, this kind doesn't come out but by fasting and prayer, which of course are two means of developing power. So to be effective, we want to exercise both the authority that we have, but also develop power. And power comes simply by reliance relying on God, depending on Him, walking with Him, prayer, and all the other disciplines of the faith. Okay, so people have open doors. How do we close the doors and get rid of these demons? Well, that's a great question, and I personally believe that closing the doors oftentimes can be a process. I find in my own life, the deeper I get in my walk with Jesus, with Yeshua, the more in my heart I realize I need to repent of. In other words, oftentimes the Lord will start off showing us sur surface things, but then the deeper we go, we see perhaps uh, elements of unforgiveness or pride or a spirit of accusation. And so closing the door involves, number one, repenting of sin continually as the Lord shows us in deeper ways sin within our hearts. Areas that we might not know today, but a year from now, because we've grown in grace, we'll see them. I like uh, but do you know what's happening in the world? Uh, Christianity is saying because of a wonderful concept called grace, um, uh, we, we're, we can go on our merry way. We don't have to worry about those little sins. Yeah, any, any, any truth carried to the extreme becomes a heresy, doesn't it? Absolutely. We know the first thing that Jesus said was repent for the kingdom of God. I don't God's hear name. that word much. It's I don't go to congregations and the pastor gets up and says repent. You know why? All the people get up and go out. And he wants them to get up and come in. But you know something? Without repentance, you won't even see God. Mm, absolutely. And that's one of the ways that we close the doors and keep demons from getting in. When we repent, we close the door. We close out the darkness from our lives. When you talk to, in the spirit world, to a demon, how do you do that? You just speak. You don't speak to them in terms of having a conversation. You speak at them. So I, I, you speak at them. Absolutely. You're not looking to converse. I say, Satan, I reject you. Get out of my head. It's just that simple. Just a direct command to a demon. The demon has to obey. Well, what happens if you sense it didn't happen immediately? Do you throw in the towel? Do you give up? 
absolutely not. And that was part of the point of the dream I shared a little earlier. When I grabbed a hold of that demon that was occupying my space, my house, I took a hold of him, I began to punch that demon in the face, and at first, it seemed like nothing was happening. It seemed like I had no power. It seemed like all my, my energy was, was not having any effect on him. But you know what? I was so committed to getting free, I wasn't going to stop. And as I persisted and as I kept going, bam, that demon broke. And it's the same thing uh, with deliverance. We have to be committed to being free and know that we will get free because Jesus said, if the Son shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Amen. You personally battled with something that many of you are battling with right now a spirit of fear. You think it's yourself. No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. It is a spirit of fear. Uh, I, I talked to someone recently. They told me they were afraid to speak in public. You know what I found, Rabbi What's Snyder? That? Whatever uh, your strength is, it almost, you're like attacked in that area. Mm -hmm. The person would do wonderful sharing in public but they wouldn't even try mm. because they were fearful of it. Mm -hmm. What would you say? Well, I would say that number one, knowing the Word of God, knowing truth and using that truth as a weapon out of our mouth to speak is a key to getting free. The, the Word of God breaks the power of demons. Jesus, of course, we know, defeated the devil in the wilderness in Matthew 4 by speaking the Word of God. When we know that speaking the Word of God has life in it and we speak it at the demon, at the darkness, the darkness will break, the darkness will bend, it will lose its hold, and more and more we're going to enter into freedom and into the light. I think it's important that people recognize that this isn't always just a one-time quick fix. This is a commitment to being free, knowing you will get free. The principles work. The principles that I teach, said they work. Tell me how it worked with you with fear. Well, how it worked with fear with me is a number of different avenues. Number one, truth. God began to reveal to me, number one, that the commitment to getting free wasn't just about my desire to be free. It was about His glory. And then I began to use the Word of God against the devil in the specific areas that Satan was causing fear. In other words, if Satan was causing fear in the area of health, I would use the Word of God against Satan in the area of my health. If Satan is using fear in the area of finances, then we use what the Word of God says about finances against Satan in that area. So wherever now, when you say you would use it, what exactly would you do? I would quote it. I would I would I would, you know, David said he encouraged himself in the Lord. I would speak it to myself, quote it out loud. I would say, Satan, I reject you, get out of my head. Then I would replace his lie with the truth speaking, this is what God's Word says, to myself to encourage my own heart. So I would cast him out, then I would affirm myself in the truth. I would like you to pray right now for the people all over the world watching right now. They're looking for help. Amen. Amen. Pray for them. Father God, right now in Jesus' name, I just want to thank you how much you love your children. Father, your word says, Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us that we should be called the children of God, and thus we are. And you said, Father, greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world, and that this is the victory that's overcome the world, our faith. Father, we want to thank you right now that in Jesus we already have the victory. Now, Father, I speak a word of activation over your people right now. That they would realize at a deeper level than ever before that your spirit lives within them, that life is on the inside, and that the life that's in them is greater than the power of darkness that's outside of them, and that, Father, you would activate them out of passivity into activation to use their faith by your spirit with the Word of God. In Jesus' name, Satan, I break you off of God's children's life. In Jesus' name, with the knife of God's Word, I command you to release them right now. Let them go, and in Jesus' name, I say to you, beloved child of God, in Jesus' Jesus, you are free. Would you say that all believers have to get rid of garbage in their life that was picked up before they were believers or picked up from ancestry or just a few? I think everybody, I think all of us are progressively journeying deeper into freedom and into God's light. So I think this is for everybody. I think everybody has battles that they need to overcome. You know, Paul said at the very end of his life, I fought the fight. I've run the race, and now there's laid up for me the crown of righteous. We all need to be fighting because nobody is yet perfectly free, and all of us can enter into greater freedom and greater peace. And I speak freedom to you right now. He has a name, Yeshua, Jesus the Messiah. You shall know the truth, and the truth, it'll set you free. <laughs> yeah. 
Rabbi Kurt Schneider personally struggled with the forces of darkness. God revealed to him how to progressively gain victory. Now he shares with you the biblical keys on how you can overcome and enter into a new level of supernatural freedom and victory over the forces of darkness and how you can walk every day in the supernatural power of God. Call now and get Rabbi Kurt Schneider's Freedom and Self-Deliverance Package, which includes his powerful book, Self-Deliverance, and his anointed five-part audio CD teaching, Freedom and Deliverance. Yours for a donation of $45. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9354. Through the Freedom and Self-Deliverance Package, you will learn how to identify and overcome the enemy's number one weapon against you. Understand the various ways demons try to take up residence in your life. Find out how to close and lock doors of entry the enemy uses so he can never harass you again. Begin to instantly determine thoughts and actions that are inspired by God and those that come from demonic influence. Understand how not to be led astray by other voices, especially in the end times that we are living in. Pronounce specific commands that compel the forces of darkness to leave. Close demonic access that was gained through generational sins, fear, and trauma. Understand how to free yourself and help others get free. Receive your healing from emotional and physical ailments that are tied to demonic strongholds. Experience on an ongoing basis God's love, peace, favor, and His power like never before. This concept of self-deliverance came because there were so many people that were coming to me, and we don't oftentimes realize that there are things that we're doing or things that have happened to us in the past even things that were in our family, our, our, our genealogy, that can be open doors for demons to gain access to. When people gain understanding, they're able to close those doors. The demons no longer have the same access into their lives. Rabbi Schneider will lead you through many powerful prayers throughout his book and the five-part audio CD teaching series that will help you in the process of self-deliverance. I'm so excited about this self-deliverance because here's what's going on. We're in the last, the last days. There's a flood of the demonic on planet Earth. It's going to make you free. You're going to walk in the freedom you've always felt you're supposed to. I can't wait to get this book and the five CD set, Freedom and Deliverance, into your hands as soon as possible. I want you to get this, not just for yourself. There are going to be multitudes coming to you for help. Don't miss out on getting Rabbi Kurt Schneider's Freedom and Self-Deliverance Package, which includes his powerful book, Self-Deliverance, and his anointed five-part audio CD teaching, Freedom and Deliverance. Yours for a donation of $45. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9354. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural, P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina. Carolina 28278. Please specify offer number 9354 or log on to sidroth.org. Call or write today. Next week on It's Supernatural. Is there a diabolical plot to remove major sections from the Bible that we don't even talk about today, which will cost us the power of God and in some cases, even our very salvation. My guest says yes. Yeah.